Hello, and the share. I'm Arden again, and today I would like to talk to you about Orisha Yewa. Her name is Yewa, Yegwa, Ewa. She has many epithets and names, and I would like to talk about my worship of her and her fun function in general. Now, in Santeria and the diaspora, you have like the seven African powers which are arguable who they are. Sometimes uh, Onwila is one of them, sometimes Oya is one of them. I'm not, I'm not going to talk about them this time because they all get plenty of attention and their offerings are well known and their function is well understood. But I, I'm making this video because Orisha Yewa basically uh, lacks that explanation. Now, beforehand I would like to explain what an Orisha is. Orisha is a word that comes from the Yoruba people. It means a thing that has been placed on the earth. According to the Yoruba faith, there is this mighty creator or creatrix. It's like an androgynous Olodumare or Olorun. It has many names and it's inaccessible to human beings. But Olorun has placed on the earth a powers that be that makes this the existence here possible. Of all of these powers, uh, Yewa is one of them. Now, she doesn't get really much attention in literature and stuff like that. Uh, we can find like encyclopedia entries, like in books like this, Encyclopedia of the Spirits by Judica Illis, which is the most um, diverse that I have found. I found like mentions of Yewa here and there. I, I really had to go to Babelaus that lives in Nigeria and Benin and, and question in order to get a pataki, a story, a, a, some sort of explanation. But it's not really complete. But, but in our Ila we have our own traditions about Yewa and I would like to explain them very well. First of all, Yewa is the Orisha of decomposition, fungus, uh, worms, and of course flowers. She is somewhat similar to the Greek and Roman Kore uh, or Persephone. And uh, she has the power to make things decompose. Now, now some of you might ask, okay, uh, how is it useful for me? Well, we, we eat many decomposed fermented things like uh, bread and beer that has like yeast in there, which is basically Ewa. Uh, we uh, things that are mental in our mind like thought patterns that makes us suffer they also needs to they, they need to decompose stop existing okay so this power is the power of decomposition of rotting of fermenting of turn it's like a part of the alchemy now Orisha Yewa belongs to the cemetery alongside the uh, Orisha Oba and Orisha Oya, which is the Orisha of change. She is also uh, allegedly married to Onmila, which is Orisha of divination, uh, Babelu Aya, which is the Orisha of disease, um, um, Boromu, which is the Orisha of desiccation. Uh, and you know many others maybe uh, we don't really know we don't have complete information and uh, the children of Yewa are usually tough yet very sensitive people sometimes they have oversensitivity but they have like this toughness and bluntness they would say everything in their mind all of them are women Orisha Yewa shuns men I will explain in a second why and uh, and they are like, you know, many of them are artists. Some of them choose to be, you know, in so solitary. Some of them choose to be nuns, okay? Now, uh, the story of Orisha, uh, uh, yeah, well, the famous one is the story that she got uh, either enchanted or raped by Orisha Shango, which is the Orisha of fire, masculinity, and everything. She got pregnant. She had a, a, she she got pregnant with Borosia, and when Olodumare or Olokun, it, her father depends upon tradition, asks her why wh what's happening, wh why what what's wrong, 
you know, she cries and says that she doesn't want to lay eyes on men again. This is why she was sent to the cemetery and the first thing that rots in the human corpse are the eyes so we couldn't look at her. And she's considered to be the last Orisha that people would meet. And since then she's also a wonderful spirit to call upon in a case of rape, in a case that a man has did wrong to a woman and damaged her. She would be the spirit, the spirit to call, because she would have absolutely no mercy towards that man that did so. Okay, so another story tells us how she got married with Old Mila. This is a story that uh, Shango Saki Ngajala from uh, Nigeria told me. Uh, Old Mila was running away from the Aje, which are the witches or the bad forces of nature, and the Yewa was washing clothes clothes at the the riverside and when she he saw her he told she told him the story and she hid him behind her you know below her washing pot and when the witches came and asked where he is she gave them the wrong direction and Omila got saved and this is how they got married okay which which connects Yewa with really the religious ritual and you know inside the the secrets of, of the universe, okay, like Oshun and many other women that that married their uh, own Mila. Now, uh, she is kept with her tools within a basket hidden within the priest's house. Now, I'm not a priest, I haven't got initiated, but I have a basket for her, okay, which I keep her. It's made from seaweed, and uh, inside I keep her. Uh, well, the common name for this in the African and Spanish diaspora is Makuto. I've made this one myself with her colors, which are scarlet and pink, okay? And um, her numbers are basically 7, 9, 11, 13, you know, those are basically her numbers. And it contains many interesting things, and, and, and in the basket I keep many dried uh, flowers and herbs that she likes. Okay, so this is in a sacred place. The, the Makuto always also contains some human bones. There is an antique cemetery in my city that, you know, that is like in complete and utter neglect. And it's very easy for me to go there and collect cemetery dirt and uh, even human bones that get exposed every once in a while. Okay, and on, on uh, Tuesday, I'm going to have a patient that she's a child of Yewa and I promised to make her a Yewa Nikisi. So, oh, and first of all, she also has an oil. I, she, I will publish the oil recipe and uh, her incense recipe, which I had to reconstruct because the information is really missing, okay? About her herbs and stuff like that. It's not like, you know, you open a, a Cuban and African diaspora herb book and you find herbs of Orisha Yewa. It's very difficult to find. There are no lists. You know, if you look like an Oshun herb list everywhere online, you will find more than 50, 60 herbs. Okay? But you don't find anything for Yewa, which is a pity. Which is a pity. Now, her symbol, her main symbol... By the way, her taboo is sexuality. Okay? So, when one walks with her, one mustn't mention, even in Induendo, anything that is sexual. One doesn't, is not allowed to smell of sexual fluids. One has to clean her, him or herself very well before walking with this Orisha. And her, her offerings are usually scented flowers, not just one. You have to give her like a bouquet of pink roses or scarlet roses or a mixed bouquet. Or, you know, you can give her fruits and meats to desiccate. You can just put them outside on the earth or bury them and she would desiccate them. And this is something that she likes very much to do. And I get very good response from it. I get a very good response from it. And in character, she's like a delicate royal queen. She's not a violent Orisha, okay? She's the one that basically cleans all the things that are no longer necessary in their form. She returns our body to the earth to be reborn again, new and fresh. She is necessary and she is wonderful, really, okay? And uh, so, so what are the works of Yewa, okay? My teacher said that she used 
some of her charms to help make better compost but I see behind that first of all Yewa is both the preserver just think about how you make pickles there are like microbes that change the pickle and so it preserved okay with Boromu she it's like you know mummification and stuff like that because Boromu as I said was the re is the Risha of mummification and things like that and uh, she can always also destroy and disintegrate things okay let's give you an example a case I have been working on is a woman is casting constantly love spell at others woman's la uh, husband now that woman has the accessibility to do so and she can but she can't really protect her husband all the time from the other woman okay and if we remove the spell she just cast the spell again so the point is not to remove it like in one shot like poof okay the point is to make something that desiccates that molds that rots okay and after that thing desiccates molds and rots you know it's like every spell that you would cast would almost immediately disintegrate and this is something that Yewa does I just add Yewa things into a bottle I add some fluids and I let the whole thing ferment in there in the sun okay and uh, and this is part you know with if I find for instance something from the husband or from the love spell okay another thing is that and I'm not going to give you the recipes but for the women of you that has been harmed by men you could use the powers of Yewa to desiccate parts of their anatomy if you are creative enough and you know where to look or if Orisha Yewa allows you to do this if you have been grievously harmed enough if somebody wants to talk to me about this you can just contact me and and we can we can walk things out but I'm not going to give the recipe here and I'm sure as hell I'm not going to you know just give that away on YouTube okay and one of your symbols and this is okay this is the cloth in which I'm going to make uh, that woman's charm that that woman's Lakisi is the vulva okay which is crowned and I have here basically the ingredient let's see if, if I can like okay I have valerian flower that I picked some dried roses I have some human bones uh, some a dried mushroom some dried worms that I got from a fish seller shop flowers Dittany of Crete Dittany of Crete is an important necromancy herbs yes Yewa is very powerful in necromantic powers because she can she, when when you want to go and do some necromancy talking to the dead okay and I'm not talking just just about you know observances to your ancestor on, on Abu Veda or you know your ancestor altar and stuff like that okay but when you really want to return the dead for a little while Yewa would give you back their body for just a little time so you could like mix her oil with some uh, oil oil okay here it says here Yewa and you can do many things now Yewa also likes churchy things okay mirror frankincense standalwood the things that makes us feel like in the sacred space okay so for instance okay for the more necromantic era as i said i will be adding some human bones or some bones just get some bones you know the bare bones of the matter and i can uh, and, and some litany of crete and some uh, you know belladonna necromantic herbs if i want her desiccate e i would add more worms more dried fungus if you can get like nine dried fungus mix fungus mix sorry english is not my mother tongue forgive me for all those slip of the tongue in advance this would be really wonderful and um, if you want like the church Yewa like the way Yewa that is married with uh, Ormila that's the Mew and Frankincense stuff so you, you, it, she has like many modes oh and you can also have a garden Yewa which is like nine sorts of flowers dried flowers that you can you know and by the way I, this incense I have processed it in a spice grinder uh, or a coffee grinder it's really a wonderful thing for us witches that like, loves to work with powders okay used to like work really hard to powder things then mix it with talcum powder no more 
you can buy food chips, some coffee grinder, and you can make yourself a wonderful powder and wonderful instances, okay? And those are her elekes. As I said, her uh, elekes are sacred uh, necklaces that are done during incantations and in evocations and um, calling Orisha, that the specific Orisha. The first one you make is for uh, always for, for uh, Legba, Legwa, Eshu, etc. Okay? This is like her Eleke, which is, as you see, the, the pattern here, which is traditional, is like warm shaped. It looks like a warm, okay? I also have a more ritual Eleke that I am here to, sh that I am here to show you. I'm wearing it now. This is her ritual Eleke. I mean, you should... You should have like three sets of elekes, okay? You should have like a personal one that nobody will ever see. You should have like a daily day one and you have a ritual one. And this one has like a black coral flower, okay? And it's like a nine based eleke that I have made for Orisha Yewa, okay? And her stones, her crystals that you can use um, for her charms okay one is rose quartz because it has like antioxidant preservable things that could keep you young okay and the children of Yewa really have to take care of their skin hair and teeth they have to constantly take care of that because they have the tendency to get old early sadly okay and um, and they have to really call upon her preserving powers. This is another thing that she could do. She could like preserve a good situation for a very long time. Meaning if you have like a long meaningful relationship or if you have like peace in the family or financial gain that you would like to keep, please go ahead, carve this symbol on a candle. First carve a little issue. Uh, if you don't have yeah, or you just use rose atar or rose or rose, rose, especially the pink and the scarlet roses is her flower, okay? And just ask her to maintain this as much as you can. Give her a bowl of strawberries on the side, okay? You can do those things. Those are very useful. And um, and, and working with Orisha Yewa really, you know, at the beginning, eh, I don't really have, she was like a very on the side, but as a witch, the more I walked, the more she became central, the more she became important, okay? The more she became uh, interesting to me. So now I'm researching her. And, and yesterday I have spoken with a Santera that was crowned Yewa, and I was so happy to hear that she's going to write a book about, about her soon. And I'm just, you know, quivering in anticipation to hear more stories because I, I'm the Ilis Oceanite, as in the Ilis Oceanite, I'm a story collector. And I'm very much interested in many stories of the Orishas. So, um, this is basically, you know, this is my work as a witch with that spirit. By the way, you don't need to get initiated to work with the spirits. Give them the, the, the offerings they like, okay? You know, with, with all the Vudunsi spirit and all the Yoruba spirits, you have to start with Eshu. You have to, Eshu, which is leg by leg, or many names, okay? You have to feed him. His basic offering is three uh, rooster legs. If you can't get rooster, do chicken, but try and get rooster. Those are his favorite. Bake it, give it to him in a corner somewhere, okay? And he would open the gate and, and take your offerings to the rest of the Orishas, okay? And this, this is very important. You start making an oil, don't start making the Yewa oil. You need to, when you start making oils to the Orishas, you need to start with, of course, Eshu. And the same with incense and all those things. He has to get his first every day, or he gets cranky and he will pull tricks on you, or simply your offering will not get to that Orisha. This is, this is like the one rule. The second rule is also always worship your ancestors, okay? Even though I have, huge aversion to Judaism because I grew in a Jewish tradition, okay, and I, I have seen her, its worst sides, and its manipulative women dishonoring sides. I have a Tehillim book in my bo in my room next to a Butala because I was born Jewish and I worship my ancestors. So the Rishas would come first after Eshu and the ancestors, okay? So this is, you know, 
few things that you need to know. And if you would like to know more about Yewa, there is a website. First of all, she has a Facebook page that used to belong to a wonderful uh, woman that I know. Uh, her nickname is Victoria, but she had to, Victoria Aurora, but she had to move on, so I picked it up like yesterday. So I'm doing this, this thing for it. And, uh, and please like it, please like it. We really, I, I, it, it would make me feel happier and I would just make more recipes and publish more things on it if I feel that people care about this little shrine of Yewa that I did online. Okay, I thank you for the listening. Goodbye and please have a wonderful week. Ashe.